this is Tumka Travels and today we are in Reykjavik! Reykjavik is the capital of Iceland and only two and a half hours flight from Manchester. The Golden Circle is the handful of beautiful natural attractions within easy driving distance from the city. Okay, question one. What is the name of that giant church that's behind me? The Halgrimskirkja. Well done. Halgrimskirkja is Reykjavik's most striking landmark. Built in the mid 20th century, the towering cathedral was designed to reflect the naturally occurring basalt columns found all over Iceland. Inside the decor is fairly simple, reflecting the church's Lutheran denomination. But sitting at the highest point in central Reykjavik, its real attraction is the tower, which you can ascend via a lift for fantastic views across the city. It cost 1,000 Icelandic krona, which is about six pounds, which seems expensive, but Iceland is definitely not a cheap country. Question two, what is the name of the person who is in the statue outside of the Halgrimskirkja? Oh, uh, he's Norwegian and yes. Ivar the Bombers. <laughs> no, it's Leifa Eriksson. Right. This is the harbour, the Reykjavik Opera House. Ben, can you sing us some opera? Harper dominates the city's seafront and is the country's biggest performance space. While there are plenty of shows on offer, the best thing about the concert hall is its interior, which is free to enter and to explore. Though impressive in the daytime, the best thing about it is the way it looks at night, when hundreds of colour-changing lights illuminate the building. Creating patterns and waves, the illumination is meant to resemble the northern lights, which is the closest we got to seeing them while we were there. We're not annoyed about that at all. Seriously, we're not. It's not like we were sat in a ditch in the dark for several hours for five consecutive nights or anything. Livid. And further down the seafront, you'll find the Sun Voyager, a large metal reconstruction of a Viking longboat. Question three. What did Leifur Eriksson do? Okay, I know that. He came from Norway, founded Reykjavik, um, then he discovered America. Yes! Um, the current United States. Yeah. Correct, well done. When the weather is bad, which it often is, the city offers plenty of museums for you to explore. The best of these is the National Museum of Iceland that charts the country's full history and even has a complete 19th century peasant's hut reconstructed inside. I don't know about you, but I've often wondered how on earth people managed to live in Iceland in the days before central heating. Well, now you know. Entrance costs 1,000 kroner, which also gets you into the Culture House, which exhibits more of the country's artistic heritage. There's also a place where you can leave your name filled in in old cabinet, so if you go, see if ours are still there. And on the hill overlooking Reykjavik is Perlan, a virtual reality exhibition in which you can explore the natural wonders of the rest of the island. And it has great views. This is a cleaner. <laughs> What's it taste like? Like a donut. How is its cardamom glaze? It's the best cardamom glaze I've ever had. <laughs> what have we found, Ben? Um, a traditional Icelandic dish, which is rotten shark. Um, it's supposed to taste like absolute death. Um, yeah. Are you going to try it? I think it should. No, absolutely not. If you're a real man, you do it. It is meant to be the <laughs> worst tasting food on the planet. Um, Are you being quite offensive to the Icelandic people right yeah, now? Yeah, I am. Honestly. <laughs> and also, it's about £10 as well. It's £10. Pounds. It's a shark. So, based on price alone, it's not going to be Loser. Question four. What proportion of the population of Iceland live in Greater Reykjavik? Uh, right, uh, I'm going to say 65%. Well, that's really close. 64% is the best right, answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Outside the city and the first stop of the Golden Circle is the Thingvellir National Park. Thingvellir. In the grand scheme of things, this waterfall is not 
the biggest that we're going to see whilst we're here. However, it is our first Icelandic waterfall. And this was literally just around the corner. Giza is a geothermal area with steaming, bubbling hot pools. But what everyone is there to see is the eruption of the geyser Strokur. Look at everybody trying to get the same shot of the Giza erupting. The eruptions happen every six minutes or so and are pretty damn impressive. The final stop on the Golden Circle is... Gulpas! This powerful waterfall sees 140 cubic metres of water plummet down its two tiers every second. And it's only three hours drive from Reykjavik. I wonder if we've reached peak waterfall. Question 5. What is the name of the Icelandic president? Okay, so I know she used to be a woman as well as a lesbian. Um, I'm not sure she's in office anymore. So... I think it could be Ragnar Lothbrok. <laughs> From Vikings? Indeed. Uh, no, an incorrect. It is, Agatha. name is, and forgive my pronunciation, Guthner oh, yes. Thorlacius Johannesson. That's what I thought. I wasn't sure. I hesitated and then, you know. I yeah. You, knew. Yeah, you I knew. knew. I knew. I knew. I knew. He's a really good world leader, actually. No trip to Reykjavik is complete without a visit to the world famous Blue Lagoon. Located about a 45 minute drive from the city, there are buses running fairly regularly to the luxury spa. How do you feel Jeremy? Very warm. Relax. The water is warm. Um, it's salty because it's seawater. Um, and it's actually not that crowded, considering how many cars there were in the uh, car park on the way in. Uh, yeah, but it's lovely. I highly recommend the visit. Although it is man-made, the water is heated geothermally and pumped into the basin from about 2,000 metres below the surface. The temperature averages at around 38 degrees centigrade and feels pretty luxurious, even when air temperatures plummet. I feel like a turtle. I feel like a goldfish. I feel like a goldfish. I feel like a shark. I feel like a seahorse. I feel like a clownfish. <laughs> I feel like a starfish. I feel like a cod. I feel like a herring. I feel like a haddock. I feel like a killer whale. I feel like a mermaid. You look like a mermaid, babe. Mm -hmm. Living my best life. Hashtag. Hashtag my best life. The spa sells its own range of skin products, but you get a free mud mask when you visit, which is made of naturally occurring silica found at the lagoon. We're wearing our complimentary face masks. Um, I think I look really stylish. I think I might wear it to work. <laughs> the Blue Lagoon isn't cheap, setting you back about £75 even for its cheapest package. We made a day of it and fully made the most of our time there. Whether you want to sit in its steam cave, sip Prosecco in the warm blue water or just lounge on the pure white lava, there's no doubt the Blue Lagoon is the peak of luxury. You do come out feeling refreshed, renewed and pampered and it's got to be experienced to understand what is such an essential part of the trip to Reykjavik. The city itself is small, containing bars, restaurants and boutiques. While not as cosmopolitan as many European capitals, it certainly feels very international and is very much a 21st century Nordic city. However, the real attraction in Iceland isn't its capital. It's the breathtaking countryside that surrounds it, which is where we're heading next. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and to follow us on Instagram at Through My Quirky Eyes. And tune in next time when we will be. Where we will be doing the first half of the Icelandic Ring Road. The South. Until next time, folks. See ya.